In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top-ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer lots of fitness and health questions that are asked by our listeners. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion, so we talk about current events, we talk about investments, real uh, life things. Talk so. about the stock market, the real estate market. We talk about uh, you know news articles, studies on fitness. We have a lot of fun. That part of the episode is 44 minutes. After that is when we answer the pure fitness and health questions. By the way, if you want to see all the topics and just go to the part that you want to listen to the most, the in other words, they're timestamped, go to mindpumppodcast.com. All right, so let's go through the whole episode today. We start out by talking about Justin's proud father moment. Mm. He taught his children a very, very important lesson that only fathers can teach. Brought a tear to my eye. Then Justin talked about his vegan days. It's a Justin vegan day, though, so don't get excited, uh, all you vegans out there. There was meat involved still. I was close. Uh, then when I talked about a study on diet, apparently eating healthy food, even if you're overweight, is better uh, than eating uh, an appropriate amount of calories with unhealthy food. Kind of an interesting study. Then Justin brought up uh, fake yoga Instagram pages. We know what you're trying to do with those yeah, poses. Yeah, come on. You're not teaching yoga. Yeah, we know what you're doing. Then we talk about Amazon's bike snafu. Uh, the other day, it looked like Amazon was releasing an exercise bike to compete with Peloton. Now they're saying they're not affiliated at all. What the hell oh, happened? Interesting. Then I talk about how Magic Spoon is one of our more popular partners. They make cereal that is made with high quality protein. It's high, high protein cereal with no sugar that tastes like the sugary kid cereal you grew up with. No joke. I'm not making this up. It's legit. The stuff tastes amazing. It has no sugar. Oh, and by the way, it's not artificially sweetened. Does it sound too good to be true? Try them out for yourself and see. It's so almost magical. So far, everybody's super excited about it. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump to get that discount. Then I talk about uh, Zoom. Now, Zoom is a company that produces video conferencing. They seem to be crushing right now, so we speculate as to why they're doing so well over other companies like Skype. Uh, then I talk about how gyms are actually quite safe during the COVID area. Some new studies have come out showing that you're more likely to get COVID in uh, many, many other places that are deemed essential. So they should open gyms back up. Open our gyms. Then we talk about Joe Rogan maybe getting uh, censored by Spotify. Good luck, Spotify. Good luck trying to, to censor Joe Rogan. Mm. Then we talk about uh, customizable pillows. These are pillows that you can enter in your height, in your information. Do you like them cold? Do you like them hot? Do you like them fluffy? Do you like them hard, firm? And you, you customize your pillow and then you use it and you sleep way better. Now, the best company for customizable pillows is Pluto Pillow. They are one of our partners and sponsors. If you go to plutopillow.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 10% off if you use the code mind pump. Goldilocks approved. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. When you work out, uh, do you build just the muscle that you're working or is then there an anabolic effect for the whole body? Next question, this person's trained to be a firefighter, wants to know what MAPS workout program to follow. We recommended MAPS performance. By the way, we have lots of different MAPS workout programs, all designed for different people and different goals. You can find all of them at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Next question, this person sits all day long at work, Wants to know if there are better ways to sit to prevent low back pain. And the final question, uh, this person wants to know what realizations we all had in our 20s that changed our life. By the way, you heard me mention earlier all of our MAPS programs. Let me give you a little bit of detail here. MAPS programs are workout programs you follow online. So you sign up, you see the exercises, how much reps, how many sets. You follow the video form, so we teach you the technique and form. And these workouts are written by real personal trainers. We're not Instagram fitness celebrities. We're not fake trainers. We're real trainers. We are so, not bots. So these programs actually work. We have many, many different MAPS programs designed for different people. By the way, all the programs also come with a mod for at-home workouts. So if you're at home right now, you don't have access to a gym, all you have is a dumbbell. Uh, you can follow all of our MAPS programs. We do have a MAPS program for people with no weights whatsoever, just resistance bands. That one's called MAPS Anywhere. But the point is, look, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Go there. Read about the programs. 
find the one that suits you best. The most effective workout you ever do is the one that is best for your goals and your body. So go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, look through the programs, pick the best one for you, sign up, try it out for 30 days. If it doesn't blow your mind, return it for a full refund. Hold on a second. Why are you wearing a cape? What do you mean you're wearing a cape today? I'll tell you later. Huh? No. Like legit, you're going to wear a real cape? Yeah, bro. On your back? Yeah. Like a fucking hero. Oh. What is it about a cape? I don't know. That just feels so cool. And why are they in, yeah, why all the superheroes have them that are cool? Yeah. I just feel like if I put on a cape and I went outside, um, I get a lot of attention. Because you stand there and things are still moving, but you're not. If I put on a cape, though, I'd have to put on eyeliner too for some reason. Oh, yeah. In my mind, I feel like that makes sense. Yeah, especially with your complexion. (laughs) (laughs) Look like a magician. (laughs) Whoa. David Blaney. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. look at my hands. Yeah, ooh. Yeah, Adam, are those your favorite shoes? They're up there. I don't know if they're my favorite. Um, You wear them a lot. I do. I've well, I've had them a long time. The mini mouses, right? Yeah, that they're, they're uh, Nike Roche. And yeah, they show were, show it to the camera. Lift your show off your uh, mobility. I've seen it. They've been in there. They've been in uh, many many YouTube videos. Uh, I'm more and more for me. It's it's. Uh, I'm getting like, ooh, I'm getting closer to the to the New Balance. I think. Yeah. It's all about more and more. I Each care. decision. Is I didn't one start step closer. I didn't st- start off caring much about the way they looked already. So well, to begin yeah. with, I already started off low. It's getting lower now. Now I I'm actually, like, is I this actually, comfortable? And do I have to tie him? You're not even a runner. It, yeah, you know, and it's also, it's also, do I have to tie him? If I don't have to tie him, they go up ten points. Wow, Velcro is coming up. Velcro. Soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I actually think uh, New Balance might be a step up from where you're at right now. So it's not a bad. No, idea. these are good, dude. <laughs> Shut up, dude. These are good. I heard they're good. I kind of agree with Adam. Yeah. 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 I, can't, I can't even put my foot up high yeah, enough yeah, to show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, still working on that mobility. Maps Prime Pro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys. I, I. It was so funny last night. I had this proud dad moment, right? And I'm thinking, uh, Courtney's like, the kids have to show you something. And so they've been, they got back into school and they've been doing all this stuff like online learning and all this stuff. And so I'm figuring that it's something related to academics and, you know, something cool they learned or they have like some science thing that they experimented with, which, you know, all these things have happened before. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know, come show me. Both boys like walk up to me. I'm like sitting at the dinner table without their shirts on. I'm like, huh? And then they both start uh, armpit farting. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I stopped and I just like, did your jaw cry? hit the floor? I almost cried. It was, <laughs> it was, it was magical. <laughs> such a- I didn't even teach them that. Where it's did just- they learn that? Dude, I, re- <laughs> you know, I, that was a big thing back in the day. Remember that? Yeah. I thought that, I thought that died. You know, I just remember having so much joy because you just figure that out and you're like, just preach, preach, preach. Yeah, I used to do this thing where I would, I'd pretend to cough. So I'd have my hand over, over my mouth and then I'd, Blown, and then I make a fart noise with my hand. It was the funniest thing. Yeah, it, all the girls laughed in fourth grade when I did that. Oh uh, yeah, I mean you're <laughs> like a big that. hit if you can make and noises. I, if the girls laugh, here's a little thing. Well, this is, I'm sure every man listening knows this. If girls laugh at you, especially when you're a kid, you're doing that all the time. Uh huh. Even yeah. if they only laugh, yeah. they yeah. laugh once. You're like, this is what I'm gonna do yeah. forever. Yeah, because it's hilarious. That's, now. Yeah. And if I, they if they say they like a shirt. I'm wearing that shirt yeah, every day. Just don't burn their hair. That I feel left out in this work. conversation. I don't remember having any good skills like that for sure. What do you mean? No. Yeah, I don't think so. You're the like, fashion guy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't you're think. Like, hey, look yeah. at me. I, I go wasn't. Left. I wasn't right. though. Back He's there. like, I was just handsome. <laughs> yes, no, I was not. That was not. That was definitely. <laughs> that was not my it. skill. Yeah. Don't my say. Face. Don't say uh, that to people. I get. You know, that's why I do. I have a. a, a I seen pictures of when you were a kid. You're a good looking kid. What the hell's wrong with you? You're tall. Well, actually, it took a while for you to get taller than everybody, right? You were not a bad looking kid at all. Like, bro, I had okay. My my two front teeth were completely crooked. I mean, like yeah, totally you, turned in. It looked like I chewed on rocks. Yeah, your grill was <laughs> okay. a little weird. Yeah. That's so true. so first of all, pictures you look back at, you don't even see me smiling. You see me with my mouth closed, right? Oh, so is that why you're oh, always that looking was right? My, that was my move forever. Yeah. Man. Okay. So th- that okay, and then I, I'm wearing you know that back then you know baggy clothes were in fashion. So if I was standing in something that was more fitted, you'd realize that I was like a you, bucko. Five. You look like a scarecrow. <laughs> yeah, dude, I look like a scarecrow with like fucked up teeth. There was nothing. There was nothing really sexy. Yeah, or attractive but you about still had. You still were handsome. I saw the pictures dude uh, G- give you your swag I, I appreciate that yeah, I, appreciate yeah. I, had a lot, I had a lot of personality huh i had a lot of personality like, yeah. your son's adorable he looks a lot like you he's yeah, good yeah. he is good looking but i think he takes after his mother that's where he well gets she's the, good looking too that's where he gets that from. you can't go wrong but he's a he's a cute kid yeah. i think you did all right with the genetics there uh, mm. now does he have the cat has he had the calves 
He does. He's got your calves? No, he's got her calves. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, he got her legs. She gonna, praise Odin. Oh, that was part of, come on, let's, let's be honest. That's why you waited? Uh, yeah. You kept you, praying? God, uh, listen, no, I'm not going to do this unless you give him good no, calves. No, I was like, I'm waiting for the right woman that has got, I mean, that's one of Katrina's best you know, physical features is her legs, dude. She's got amazing legs. Dude, oh, it's a come so, up. Yeah, yeah. Je- Jessica's got- I knew better, dude. I was like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this girl with great calves. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Jessica's got long muscle bellies everywhere. Her calves come down. Luckily, she's got small joints, so it doesn't look like a kinkle, but she's got long calves, long claws, tries to And I told you guys when the, when the doctor did the uh, the ultrasound or whatever, mm-hmm. he goes, Wow, look at these uh, look at these calves. They're uh, they're sturdy. <laughs> and I look at her, I'm like, Yeah, sturdy, yeah. sturdy calves. Yeah, I know. <laughs> sturdy calves. That's why baby. I think it's a boy though, because yeah. you don't say that about a, a, a girl baby. I feel like you wouldn't say that about a girl really? baby. I don't know. No mm. one's ever told me I have sturdy calves, that's for sure. <laughs> no, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's a reason for that. I would have lit up for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know how you know how when you know it's such a big insecurity is I can literally remember every time. I've been complimented on my calves. This is life changing. Yes, yes. There's like five times in my entire life, you know what I'm saying, where someone has said something to me like, hey, man, you got great calves. Like, I know. What? Are you was, serious? was that your biggest insecurity? Dude, that's my pocket insult for you guys. Yeah. 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 Well, we've already processed it, Justin. It doesn't work. I know. It, that's, I know. You know what's funny is that we get, I think that uh, I just got one in the day. Somebody, I think somebody on one of the Instagram posts like, just like jab that. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's that's funny. You know, it's, it's not I've, very original. I've anymore. done years yeah. of therapy. Not, not that. original. Yeah. 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 Heard it a million times. I've already jabbed it myself enough times. Yeah. It's yeah. like <laughs> this is you're you're talking to somebody who's had therapy on it. Okay, I'm fine now. <laughs> I've come full circle yeah, on it. So you can't bother me with that. Are there any body parts? Like, what was your biggest insecurity? Body parts. You know what I mean? Yeah, my 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 it calves. calves right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because even when um, you know, even when I when I started working out and stuff, like yeah, everything. You know, I mean. I, I most certainly was not like uh, didn't have the great muscle building genetics didn't pack on a lot of muscle but I mean just nothing happened to the calves like nothing mm-hmm. it just didn't respond <laughs> you just got veinier yeah, uh-huh. yeah exactly they just got veinier you know what I'm saying they just got more veins in them that's all that happened <laughs> veinier and pulsing. and yeah. so and I and I'm already a long guy right so I'm six three and I have long legs and so I feel like it it looks worse like if I was five three. They may not look so they no. they may not look so skinny, right? Mm-hmm. If I was like more short and compact, but because I'm stretched out, yeah, I think that uh, I think they, that that was yeah. a long time insecurity. I, uh, mine was always these bony shoulders, and I it's it's just a weird thing, you know. And it's like it, it, it it's just something that's like when I'm skinny, when I don't have a lot of muscle, like it's really pronounced. And it and like I didn't even bother, like it didn't bother me until people kept bringing it up, like in the locker room or like I met like a pool or something. Oh. And so I started doing like like nothing but shrugs, and like I was trying to get my traps to to get built as as much as possible, and like my neck was all huge from football and everything and like finally you know i could kind of like put that one Hear, on the shelf. hearing justin talk about like uh, body insecurities about building muscle it's like hearing a model talk about like oh i'm so bad he's bad like <laughs> shut up <laughs> i had to stop eating this one thing yeah you're talking mm. to, you're talking to yeah. two hard gainers you <laughs> yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. i'm looking at you like shut up you yeah. don't know what the hell's going yeah. when i when i was a kid it was chest that was a body part of mine that was in and justin still pokes at it asshole hey. but uh you know it's funny so that was a big thing for Only me because right? i love you growing yeah. up it was my it was my chest I can't, it's not growing or whatever. And we got on the YouTube channel. Or this is early when we first started with YouTube. And I did a video and somebody literally commented underneath, weak chest. I was like, <laughs> like that's I, it. That's just and it. I'm like yeah. a 30, you know, at the time, like 37 years old. You know, I'm a grown man. But yeah. I read that. Oh. I was like, oh, oh that's still there. Just, just, <laughs> yeah, it's just, still just there. I, I, haven't right pro- through everything. I haven't processed that one yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so how's your vegan days going? I saw you put yeah. a, What? I, I put that. I wanted to, to share this with you guys. Yeah, so I was eating uh, this this bowl. By choice? <laughs> yeah, you just ran out of groceries. Well, okay. So, so basically, like... What Courtney decided to do was like uh, basically lower the amount of meat, and so we're eating this bowl, which was like she calls it egg roll in a bowl. So there's all this um, ground meat on top with uh, cabbage and, and rice and everything, and I and I look and it's like all rice and, and cabbage, but like you, you couldn't really tell because there was still like all the meat on the top. But like she had she had lessened the, the, the portion by half, and so I was like, what? So I guess this is my vegan day now. <laughs> so your vegan day is it's just less meat. meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what are you trying to do to me here? I don't, uh, think, I don't think that's vegan. Now, no, she, was, <laughs> that's as vegan as I'm going to go. Now, does she pull the tricks on you? Because moms do this. They're really, uh, Jessica does this. She does. She, she's very good at this where she'll change the look of food so that my daughter doesn't think it's a lot. So she'll eat it more. For example, rather than cutting up meat and spreading it out over the plate, she'll keep it from being cut so it looks like it's less. So my daughter's more likely 
Teed it. So it sounds like your like your wife. Yeah. Sp- like it was sneaky. Thin, you guys should layer. have seen it. It was the thin layer. It looked just <laughs> like normal. Everything was normal, and like the kids were eating, and everything's fine. But like, I'm like, man, I am just not getting like satisfied or full or anything. And I'm like, wait a minute, like there's barely meat in here. <laughs> and she's just like, yeah, I only used like a quarter of the portion. Dude, you know, you know, who does that sometimes? How Chip- dare you? Chipotle, really annoying. Has that happened to you? When you go to get a Chipotle and you don't pay attention and you get your thing and you're like, yeah. you, you have I thought to- about taking picture of the guy that does that so i know really yeah so i come back and be like this is the where's light the he- light-handed yeah guy. where's the heavy scoop yeah Dude, where's my heavy handed i got a burrito from there first of all whoever wrapped it didn't mix things properly so one bite is all guacamole the next one's all rice i'm like i'm not trying to eat this burrito in stages and then the meat was like half you know half a serving you yes. know that conversation though reminds me of bringing up that to the audience right that doesn't know this is that you got to be really careful when you you go out to eat a lot and you take the the calorie uh, or the nutrition guides seriously. Oh yeah, you know, like they have to put those up. Those are guidelines, right? So that's something by law. It's they, never like they that. have to do. It's it's never no. And that's a such a perfect example, like uh, that you could get one person who's super heavy handed, and then somebody who's like, and probably the person who's light handed is probably giving you the real four ounce portion size they're supposed to. You're just used yeah. to like getting an extra two or three ounces. But I mean, real quickly, that that serving can be off by like three to five hundred calories easily. Mm-hmm. For I'm one the guy meal. that'll call him out on it right away. I'm like, oh, you guys uh, trying to cut costs uh, today? Like, uh, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, can I sprinkle a little more on there? Well, if I'm there while they're scooping it, so if I say extra meat, this is something I figured out. Don't say extra meat until they give you the first scoop. That is yes. a great strategy. You guys, you too. That's a great that's strategy. A, because life if you, hack. If right you there. say extra meat before they give you the first scoop, they lessen the first scoop. Yes. For some damn reason. I agree. So now I don't say nothing. I do they, the same thing with cheese. Once they drop it, yeah, then, then, I like then you to, go. Oh, you know what? I want double meat. Yeah, actually. By the way, throw another one of those yeah, on yeah. there, <laughs> and you can tell the dude's like, mm, <laughs> "You got me. You fool. That me. is that is a Chipotle You're hack right there. Killing the environment. Such a hey, dude. I read this really good nutrition study that I just read right now. So this is very interesting. So uh, fascinating. One of the first studies that I can think of that kind of points to something that may be a little different than what I think the health and fitness space tends to promote. So researchers from uh, Uppsala University followed 79,000 people in a 20-year study, which looked at the link between body mass index, so your weight, adherence to a Mediterranean-style diet. So you guys are familiar with that, right? So it's like, Fish, uh, you know, good meat, yeah, vegetables, uh, fruits, nuts, legumes, that type of thing. very natural whole foods based diet, and risk of death. So they looked at weight, Mediterranean tiled, style diet, and risk of death. So tr- trip off this. It turns out that those who followed the Mediterranean style diet, even the people who followed it that were in the overweight category, had a low risk of dying. In other words, people in the obese category that followed Mediterranean-style diet did not have a significantly higher risk of death compared to those regarded as having normal BMI. Now, people in the normal weight category who didn't have a Mediterranean diet had a higher risk of death than people in any weight category who did follow the diet. Than even the ones that were in the morbidly obese category? Well, according well, not morbid, but I think like it was heavier. just obese. Yeah. So in other words, if you eat healthy with like whole natural foods or whatever, but you're overweight, mm-hmm. according to the study, if you eat healthy and you're overweight, you're going to be healthier than someone who's the right weight but doesn't eat necessarily healthy. What a, yeah. what an interesting That's, study. I'm going to have to poke holes in it, though, here. Mm. So 79,000 people over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I've had a client follow a diet for one year. Consistent. Or, or been accurate with what they're giving you as what they've <laughs> yeah, been eating. Well, like, yeah. That's a little, I don't know, bro. It's epi- you know, You're right. It's, these are all survey-based. That's why stu- diet studies are so terrible. Terrible. Yes. But it is interesting to me. I mean, the, con- it is interesting. the, the yeah, conversation sure. is interesting. interesting, right? I, I think that is an interesting conversation, and it and it it warrants uh, speculation around that that hey you the same person overweight 30 pounds has a, a lower chance of dying by eating whole natural foods versus somebody who's the same same person same way but eating more processed well playing that- devil's advocate right there may be a little bit of a i don't know what factors they controlled but let's imagine the person who maybe is 15 20 pounds overweight mm-hmm. that does eat a mediterranean style diet are they more likely to be active what about nutrients maybe people who are normal weight who didn't eat that style of a diet, although the calories matched, 
maybe their nutrient levels weren't great, so they had low, higher risk of you know of nutrient deficiencies. Um, there's a lot of factors that we would. What have to was look the, at. What was the desired outcome of that study? Like why? why? They wanted to see what what if the, because Mediterranean style diets mm. have now been shown in many 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 of these studies to be healthy just right. generally, and I think what they wanted to see was what if they're overweight? How much does that account for the health you know issues or whatever? Versus yeah. just the diet How itself. How much of the food itself uh, plays a factor in Yes. That. Yeah. It's really interesting, right? It is interesting. So in the Mediterranean diet, isn't that like, it's heavy on uh, like omega-3s and-, and uh, Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, heavy on fish. It's yeah, heavy on Olive meat. oils. And- L- lots of lasagna and- No, I'm just kidding. No, Come on, not, man. It's like- <laughs> No, it's. I think it's a. It's a. It's a heavy fish diet, right? Yeah. It's more more Greek fish, cheese. fish Feta. legumes. Um, yeah, you know, there's uh, f- uh, vegetables. Um, fruit, it was one of the. It was one of the few diets I actually, when clients would come to me and ask, like, "Hey, I want to follow a diet routine," I was like, oh, "Okay, I'm game for this." It's not low in fat, that's for sure. Yeah, it, no, but it, the fats are like olives, mm-hmm. uh, cheeses, um, uh, fish. You know, mm-hmm. they'll have a lot of fish in their diet. Right. So it's a pretty pretty. Pretty good diet. You're right. I do the same thing with clients. Yeah. Uh, paleo and Mediterranean, generally speaking, are- Like the whole 30 is kind of something that I throw out there. Every now yeah, now. they're kind of decent, right? Yeah, to, they came later, but that once they well, did- I mean now. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think whole 30 is one of the best. I, mean, I, I, I would agree. The, the, the concept is a, is a great place for a lot of people to start. Yeah, I would yeah. totally agree. Dude, um, you know, one of the things I love about social media are the trends that you start to see people following. They start to copy each other. Yeah. Justin pointed one out that is hilarious. Oh my God. Yeah, we're gonna talk about this. Dude, what is yeah. it? Okay. Dude. Okay. Let me say so basically I was just looking at my normal feed and just like what you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Obviously there's some butt models in there, you know, like they just kind of show up every now and then. Um one of them was a yoga enthusiast, yoga practitioner, and they were doing moves that I thought I'm just, I'm wondering if those are legit moves or they're just like very invasively photographed moves. <laughs> yeah. What? It's like, so these are, so he points Like sexual yoga poses? Yeah. So yeah. He, he points it out. He's like, look at this. He goes, these are fake yoga pages, but they're really like women just like, like look at this yoga pose, but it's a, sp- it's like a, a spread eagle pose yeah. with the crotch or, or they're a bent, bent over, over and it's just like zoomed all the way up in there. Yeah, every yeah. position. Yeah. So he's like, dude, look at this. And then, you know, when you look at one page, it you know shows other pages or whatever. I'm like, oh my God, this is a trend. Yeah. It's all, and none of them are like really yoga pages. It's really like. No, it's like they've, yeah, they've transitioned from, uh, you know, all the G strings to now it's all yoga pants doing like very provocative poses. I feel like slowly but surely Instagram is turning into like a PG 13 version of Pornhub. Oh, everything. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah, I and feel like that. And it's making like the perfect segue into, you know, OnlyFans pages, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, okay, oh, there's a category for this. Yeah. Somebody wants like super sexual yoga stuff. I wonder like, how much that company is making because they're providing the platform for all these. Yeah, look that up, Doug. That's a good question. In, right influencers there. to just drive people to and they got they got to be making a cut off of every transaction. That's a good question. Why did I not look that up? All the things I've looked up around, I'm not looked that up, Doug. I'm curious about how OnlyFans, OnlyFans company page, whatever. I don't know what the, what it is. Yeah, they got to be making a percentage for sure. Oh yeah, and we we never talked about the cameo that that other business that was like popped up out of nowhere, which you could basically pay a celebrity or like an old celebrity to kind of like do a shout out to one of your friends or whatever. And like, I guess some some people have really used that to to make a, a lot of money off of. And uh, I think Michael Rappaport was one of the main ones that's been killing really? there. Yeah. So they pay you to just say, oh, happy birthday to John Smith from yeah. whatever, or like a random about something or whatever. Yeah, like I feel can, like I feel like celebrities like because did you guys see the uh, read about the ratings of the last uh, what is it the award show was it the Emmys yeah they or whatever? tanked like Tank, worst, worst tanked ever. they're just becoming irrelevant like Ugh. the old school celebrities are becoming irrelevant and then right now because I saw some awkward clips they're, they're, yeah me too and, but they're not like they can't produce uh, shows they can't do their normal thing so I feel like they're <laughs> yeah they're trying to make money yeah you and, know? It, and it's like how do we stay in everybody's feed and be relevant and so they're, <laughs> they're it's it I don't know that whole thing with uh, Shia LaBeouf too or whatever like where he was like, so good. did you watch that video so smoking? good do you know yeah. they did they did like a reading so they did this for charity um I wish I remember what the charity was What's his name Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. I don't know. Was, Something like that. I just got to say it fast. Right. <laughs> so they did, a, they did a charity event uh, where they got all these celebrities together. And I think it was Morgan Freeman who read 
the basically the the script for uh, Fast Times at original not Fast Times. What was the other uh, popular one where Spicoli's in? Yeah, that's Fast Times. Is it, oh, is that, is that, yeah. Is uh-huh. Sp- okay, that is Fast Times, right? Yeah. So they 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 read that, right? So they read this this the screenplay of that Morgan Freeman, did, and then they all the famous people acted out characters. They read their lines. Oh, I see. Uh, and so he was Spicoli. Oh, and so, so he, he get away with it. So he oh, embraced okay. the character by in his car smoking weed. I, he just stole the show. It was absolutely hilarious. That yeah. meant, probably one of the best things I've seen celebrities do and since this whole COVID thing's been going on. I've seen a lot of stupid stuff happen, a lot of crap going on. Mm, yeah. That was cool. For a cool cause, got together a lot of big A-list actors and actresses and they put together this great little thing for charity and he just killed it. Oh, I gotta check I'll that out. Hey, you know how you brought up the other day, Adam, about Amazon entering into the at-home workout equipment. Echelon bike. Yeah, oh. they, they introduced the bike, yeah, right? The, to they, compete with Peloton. I yeah. saw the article you're alluding to Yes, right now. dude. So weird. This is really weird now, okay, right? Yeah, Amazon happened? was apparently part of this this company or whatever. All of a sudden, they put out a statement. No, we're not part of that company. That's not, we're not doing anything with them. They what? Completely. Just so they just ghosted them. What happened is I think that original article came out by Echelon Bikes saying that they partnered up with Amazon and created this and they were calling it even the Amazon bike, right? Yeah, they the were calling Prime bike. Yeah, the Prime bike is what they were calling it. And right so 24 hours later or less, an article came out that said that Amazon has no affiliation with them to the point where they pulled off selling the bike. So some shit went down. Uh-oh. Something happened yeah. uh, with with that whole situation, and there's not a lot of information. Oh, this is so fresh. Right? This just came out because literally the, we were reading the other article the, a day ago, and it was saying how they, it's the prime bike and that this is going to be this new competitor. and yeah. yada, yada. But now they're Amazon's coming out and saying they have no affiliation with them. And they're also pulling that bike to even be sold on Amazon. And, and I mean, wonder what went down. Meanwhile, a Peloton stock takes yeah. off, right? <laughs> yeah. So what happened apparently, so it says here, so Echelon on Tuesday announced the so-called prime bike. That's what they called it. Yeah, They called it Amazon's first ever connected fitness product that was developed in collaboration with Amazon. Tuesday evening, Amazon's like, no, they denied it. They, they denied that they were involved with the partnership. And then they told Echelon to stop selling the Prime bi- bi- bike and change its branding. That's weird. Yeah. That's so strange that that would work out. I mean, that were way. they ever in business, or was this just somebody like cutting the cord? You know, like no, we're not, we're not going to. No this. way, dude! You would never be able to get away with saying Amazon Prime bike. Well, like that. so I don't know. It, so an Amazon spokesperson literally said this: "This bike is not an Amazon product or related to Amazon Prime. Echelon does not have a formal pro- uh, partnership with Amazon. We're working with Echelon to clarify this in their in its communications, stop the sale of the product, and change the product branding." Then there's an Echelon spokesperson who comes out and says in a statement that the product was built by the company to sell exclusively on Amazon, and Echelon is working to rebrand the product to get it back up for sale as soon as possible. What a terrible start. Why, though? Is this a strategy on their part? To basically, well, ba- I don't know, try to get them a position high in Amazon by, you know, sort of like so, building it like it's part of Amazon. This smells like to me like something either like something happened exactly all of a like Amazon not happy with the company or Amazon for yeah. them to not want they to must be have found something out. That's how I feel. Yeah. They like something ha- or a liability issue or something that came out that said, okay, we do not want to be affiliate because uh, the article I read too. Solid. It said that they were. It was all about. Amp. There was a partnership. They had say in part of like how they were going to develop this bike. Like there, so it wasn't like it's not like a company coming out and was trying to piggyback off their name and make a name for themselves. That's okay. not what's going on here. There'd be lawsuits involved, yes. Yes. right? If there was, if it was, you know, if we started a bike and we decided to put out fake news, yeah, that Google said, bike, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? we would get yeah. sued. Yeah, we would get sued for that. And so there's no lawsuits happening here. But they uh. pulled the bike from being sold. And they're claiming that they need to rebrand it, which makes me which makes me feel like okay, it was the bike kind of shitty, and yeah. so right away people were saying something, giving negative reviews on it. And then Amazon quickly was like, "Hey, we don't want to be tied." What to this if thing. Amazon sure. like releases its own bike soon? Well, why would it? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, that's I mean, that'd be crazy. Dude, speaking of companies, you know that's one of the things. That, not to interrupt you, but that, that's a that's a cool conversation too. You know that's one of the things that is that's harped on about companies like Amazon, like Google. Oh, that's what they get criticized yeah. for, right? Is that they they can use all their their data to mm-hmm. like go in and look at like the the best products and then go and yeah. remake. What's it selling the best, and how can we recreate this and undercut them somehow? Yeah, yeah. well, I mean that's a, it's a very smart strategy. 
if you think about it. So speaking of companies, Zoom crushing on the market right now. They hit 500 today. Wow. The shares? Zoom hit 500 a share today. Dang. You know what's crazy about that whole story? Is what the hell happened with, uh, what's the other video conferencing? I can't believe I forgot. Uh, the little blue cloud one. No, Whoa. the one that we used for podcasting that sucked all the time, Doug. Skype? Skype. Skype. Yeah, it's a blue cloud why, Okay, one. Why, did, why did, how the hell did Zoom just yeah, step over comes Skype out with all of this nowhere shit? Out of nowhere. kills it. How did that no happen? Idea. I, I maybe Doug, you know. I think that the is it just they just had so much of a better product. I think I, yeah, of COVID, I, I it think was... the the experience on Zoom, and I think Zoom did a better job. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, did a better job of uh, catering to like corporate mm. and companies and stuff like that to connect them. Where Skype was more like a, a free, easy product that just any any consumer could tap into and use. Where I think Zoom put a little more effort into like trying to dominate the yeah because you had you had that and you had Google Hangouts and then you had like one from Cisco that was like trying to do this like in conference like video conferencing and I'd never even heard of Zoom and then all of a sudden that was the standard it was crazy it's it's really strange to me because if Skype owned it and then all of a sudden it kind of felt like they owned that market and then COVID happened and Zoom just I just don't I actually don't think that market was that big yet I mean I think that really. Yeah, I think okay. If you had an Apple phone, you were uh, you were using uh, the Apple to use your video, right? Mm -hmm. Before Apple, Skype was before Apple was had really had the really good technology to where we could call each other, conference yeah, each other, FaceTime. and Face. Thank you, Facetime. I was looking for that word. Yeah. So before Apple was doing Facetime, uh, Skype was already around and being developed. So Skype was Skype originally was cool because. You could call somebody and look at look at them through your computer, yeah. and you could watch them. And that was before the technology had gotten really good with Apple. Mm -hmm. Then then Apple gets better with their technology. It leapfrogs Skype. Now you no longer use Skype. Why use Skype? My Apple phone does sure. the conference or does the calling, so I could see my friend or you know wife or girlfriend or whatever just fine. And then and at that time Cisco's still around. So Cisco's got there, and they they at that time I, as far as far as I'm aware was one of the best video conferencing platforms that were out there. Yeah. So Skype really was kind of like this. I felt like uh, for the, I don't know, average person who just wanted to do a, a video call mm -hmm. and they provided kind of a free, easy platform to have Lots access to. podcasters were, were using Skype. Right. Originally, right? So that was kind of the place to go. And then again, Cisco was kind of owned the kind of corporate world. I feel like Zoom kind of took over what, it's just it's easy to use apparently from what i've read it's super easy to use it's not spammy there's not a lot of spam on it like with skype it's uh it's you know, like average person can use zoom very easily apparently but what a success story right it just out of nowhere this company comes in and literally destroys i mean their their stock went from i don't know 50 60 bucks to 500 dollars. Yeah. what do you see as the difference doug well, I feel like uh, Skype is more person to person, right? And then if you want to record, you I think you have to have like third party plugins ah, and things like oh, that, okay. ah. and scheduling calls and things like that. So Zoom is more of a platform for corporate use, uh, individuals who want to have multiple people on, want to record their conference, and be, and besides, I feel like Skype once it got acquired by Microsoft became their redheaded stepchild mm. and they put no more effort or energy into it. So mm. I just think Zoom is a superior platform. What a, what a missed opportunity by I Skype. Know, they right? gave that up. That's crazy. Speaking of successful companies, probably one of the best partnerships we've ever had based off of the DMs I get has got to be Magic Spoon. Oh, yeah. It's got to be. I get at They're least- still killing it. I get a dozen at least uh, DMs a day of people taking pictures or whatever of them eating their Magic Spoon and then they'll post up the macros. Yeah. You know, no sugar, high protein or whatever. Loving it. Just absolutely loving it. Oh, it's I crushing. remember the first time that we, you know, I, I remember the first time that uh, Max introduced it to us and we all tasted it. And I, I mean, I wasn't even on our radar. Like I, there's so many like claims to like high protein cereal and healthy cereal. Yeah, it's low out there. sugar, no sugar. Yeah, the, and uh, yeah, of course, being a bunch of fitness nerds, tried most all of them out. And so, uh, to be honest, I wasn't even that excited about it when it first came on. I, was, I looked at it as another box. I'm like, okay, that's kind of like lame branding. I'm like, uh, this, their claim is like whatever, but the it's the taste, dude. Yeah. When you, I mean, of course, the the macros are phenomenal, but I've seen other products out there with great macros, but that taste like garbage. The fact that they found a way 
to get those the that macro profile to taste that good, it's the it's the home well, run. I I love it because too. Besides what you guys bring up, but like they they really listen to their uh, subscribers and people that are buying uh, these products. You see things um, like the variety pack and those little mini. Like that reminds me of back when I would go camping and you'd only get like the good cereal when you yeah. go camping. And <laughs> I think like the, they're really in tune with a lot of the nostalgia of like why we you know we, we really loved uh the the sugary cereal like when we were kids but you know they removed a lot of the like insanely unhealthy qualities about it and, and created something that you could like be excited about and not feel like terrible do you guys remember when they made those so they had the variety pack of little boxes which was just a dream when you were a kid right because now you could have all of them yeah do you guys remember when they made the little boxes so you could turn them on the side and open the, like, kind of cut out whatever and then pour milk in there and eat it. Do you remember that when they did that? What? There was a period there where there was a way. I don't know if they did that. There was a way where you could use the small box, mm -hmm. open it up in the middle, and, what? and I don't you, remember that at and all. And use it like a bowl. And eat cereal out of it. Well, that's smart. But yeah, I, I just remember I was always disappointed because it never had like cinnamon toast crunch. And I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> you know, it was like Frosted Flakes, Smacks. That and has like, to uh, have. Doug, that, are you looking that up? Because I've crunch. never heard of what Sal's. I think that just Sal's ghetto ass used to do that. I don't Did know that that's like, <laughs> Hold on a second. He's like, you remember when they made <laughs> this product? Like, I'm not the one. Bro, that's your His fucking, mom told him that's that. That's your broke ass. Like, you guys didn't have a bowl. Yeah. You guys couldn't afford bowls hey, of cereal. So you turned your cardboard box into bowls. Stop talking shit. I seen you one time warm up a tortilla on the stove and put butter on it and eat it. Hey, <laughs> a little bit of cinnamon too. Hey, hey, hey look out, guys. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, like it's yeah. Hey, so um, I came across some interesting studies and information on the safety of gyms in the COVID era, and this completely just blows in the face of all these politicians who are making gyms the last damn place on earth that they can reopen. So there was one study, huge one, right? This is a study on 49 million health club visits. And out of 49 million health club visits, and here's the thing with gyms, they have good tracking because they're members. So if mm -hmm. somebody's sick, they can track them, they can figure out what's going on. So the statistics from gyms are better than you would find at a restaurant or somewhere else where you don't have a membership. They don't necessarily know yeah, who you are. Yeah, following you home. Right, so 49 million health club visits, only 0.002% tested positive for COVID-19. This is 500 times less than the current estimated U.S. national average. Wow. So in other words, based off of this, one of the safer places you could go besides your house is a gym, according to these statistics. There wow. was another study done. This was a study done by the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention on 300 uh, adults who tested positive for the virus, found that eating at restaurants are riskier than other daily activities, including going to the gym. This message needs to get out. It does. It totally does. It's 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 false fear. Yeah. And gyms are suffering as a result and then the people are suffering who like to work out, maintain their fitness and health, ironically, now That's they can't the do that. That's the thing. How are you going to maintain your health, immune system, everything else that you need to, you know, protect yourself when you do get sick? How are you going to get through it? You got to be strong and healthy. Well, what's wild to me is how that's not obvious, right? You have the people that are that are that have gym memberships tend to be healthier as mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. So they're going to so the rate of COVID in them probably is going to be lower in itself. And then when you go to the gym, like you know, if there's a day you take off, it's when you don't feel good and you feel under the weather. So the likelihood that you're going to go in there and work out when you feel like crap and then potentially spread to somebody else versus you still go grocery shopping, you still go to the restaurants, right. you still do all these other things feeling under the weather. You don't go work out and push your body. 100%. Yeah. People, when they don't feel, the only people that go to the gym when they're not feeling good are fitness maniacs, which make up like 0.1% of the gym population. It's and true. And I think, you know, now they'd, they'd be a little more conscious of that. Oh, of course know? they would. Yeah. Absolutely. So my the point that Adam's making which I think is a brilliant one, is it, people, when they start to feel, you don't even have to feel very sick. If you're a normal person who exercises for health and you, you know you come home from work and you're like, oh man, I'm not feeling that good. The last place you tend to go is the gym. You, you'll, you'll, you still might make your dinner you know, restaurant uh, reservation. You're still going to go to the grocery store, do this other stuff, go to Home Depot or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to go run on the treadmill and lift weights when you're kind of feeling you know, under the weather a little bit. So you have a less of a sick population showing up. Look, I managed gyms for a long time. D do you guys remember sick people working out? You never. 
Yeah. Nobody, uh-huh. people who are sick don't go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. So you get that that self selection bias. I had a question for you, Justin. You you of all of us, I think, follow Joe Rogan more than anybody. I think you listen on a pretty regular basis. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a fan. Yeah, <laughs> a little fan girl. So <laughs> you got tell, that Joe Rogan underwear. What I, is and I, I and I've like briefly read some stuff uh, on some of the controversy that's going on with him and Spotify right now. And are there are they actually uh, censoring some of his content? And what what's happening with all that? Well, I mean, I. I don't know a whole lot about all that, but I have heard like rumors because, well, basically what happened, he had one of his recent interviews where he had mentioned like Antifa being somewhat involved with some of the uh, like arson and things going on in, in Oregon and uh, proved to not be true. And so it got like this insane amount of backlash from that. And mm. then Spotify obviously gets the heat from everybody else uh, around there that, you know, like can't believe that something like this, you know, could be especially and all this kind of stuff. And so then I've heard rumors that basically a lot of the employees in Spotify are putting pressure on them to try to have control over, you know, the the end product of what he puts out. Yeah, apparently there's people working there who are saying they want, they're petitioning for editorial uh, supervision or oversight over Joe Rogan's uh, podcast, which I think is Silly and insane. The guy signed probably a huge deal to come over there. Yeah, yeah but this is what happens when you yeah. sign with a network, well, right? It's like one of the biggest. Fi- we've, I mean, uh, they would break his con. I, I would assume that in his contract when he signed, it yeah. probably explicitly says you don't control my. They, content they probably want that, but yeah, exactly. I doubt that he would uh, allow it to happen, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I, well, so here's my speculation. Here's why I think this is happening. Now he did make a statement on his show. That proved to be incorrect, and he immediately apologized the day after. He's yeah, human, which is great. That's I mean, fine. it's great to see that. You don't see that a lot, you know, in any uh, direction anymore. Anybody apologizing for something that's wrong, right? But here's why I think they're doing this. It's because the he, he I forgot who he was interviewing, and they talked about him hosting a debate, and he said, "Hell yeah, I'd host a debate between Donald Trump and and Joe Biden." Well, once you first off, Rogan has arguably more power than any single media personality I can think of. He's got the most powerful platform in the world. I think he gets the most listeners. I think he out he out competes all the news networks and all that stuff. He's got a lot of he's a he's a cultural media phenomenon, right? This is true, right? He can influence people. It's an election year. He said he would host a debate, puts a lot of pressure on the politicians. Trump immediately comes forward and says, yeah, I'd totally do it. Mm -hmm. Now the ball's in in Biden's court, which he hasn't responded, probably because he doesn't want to do it. So now he's a a target. Rogan is now a target. So anybody who's got power in media who then dips their toe into that space, especially right now, now you're going to get hit by the side that thinks that they have the most to to lose – and just speculating, which I don't think this is, uh, I think this is inaccurate uh, from their point of view, but I think that they're speculating that he is going to pose a threat to someone like Joe Biden because, you know, Trump said he'd be on there. And in which case, Rogan might just say, I'll just interview Donald Trump, in which case they would not like that, right? Right. So I think that's where it's coming from is that he's, and it's funny because he openly yeah. uh, supported uh, Bernie Sanders. Right. So, and he openly calls himself a Democrat, which is interesting. Well, it, what's going to be interesting is if we, I mean, one of the things that I think probably, I don't think media came out with controlling narratives at the beginning until uh, money got involved, analytics got involved, and, and decades later of it happening, right? When media first came out, I, I, I imagine it was more free, like what we see podcasting and social media like right now. But over time, big money comes in and, and and buys networks and buys these things out. And then even over more time, you start to get research and analytics and data to support like, oh, wow, when we have yeah. these conversations, ratings go to here. And when we have mm-hmm. these conversations. So what's going to be very interesting to me is these platforms, you know, YouTube, podcasting, Spotify, all these different platforms that seem to be so free right now is will it always remain that way? And what we're seeing with Joe Rogan, because he's got so much power and pull and 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 you got Spotify, which is a massive company right now, is that first bit of this being challenged and how will they respond? Will they remain true to themselves of being this kind of free, diverse platform that allows all conversations and free speech to happen? Or will it start to hurt their pocketbook and will yeah. that change their their way that they actually allow conversation to happen? Well, see, it's going to be interesting. Here's the thing with podcasts, because it's long form, 
I think it lends itself, I mean, obviously it lends itself very well to open discussion, right? Yeah. It, whereas other forms of media, not so much. Like you, you, yeah, but do you, don't you think it's- the only place you can go for context Yeah, but anymore. don't you think all that stuff started that way before? I, I don't think it's a matter of- what Bandwidth was always limited, right? Bandwidth yeah. has always been limited with TV, with radio even, where there's limited amount of channels, right? Yeah, you the, have 30 to like a minute spot. Yeah, that's it. And so, okay, we're going to talk about a, a complicated issue like you know the economy, which really is a complicated issue. We, we should have long form- discussion it doesn't lend it never lent itself well so, okay, to other okay, forms okay, of media. So, okay i'm, I'm going to challenge this way of thinking because okay you're right it so it's not, it doesn't lend itself as well it doesn't mean that 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 could potentially be changed because once they start getting the data from all this stuff and let's just let's just use joe for the example that we're talking about joe has you know you know this this conversation with donald trump and something's going to happen ratings wise. Either they'll go up like crazy, they'll go right, down right, like right. crazy, they'll get all kinds of bad stuff, they'll get people unsubscribing from Spotify or more people subscribe. One or the other is going to happen. Mm -hmm. but who cares that it's long form and it's better for the consumer sure. to listen to? Something will happen in response to that, which when you're talking about money and big money, it uh, drives it. Right. Yeah. So uh, are we going to see that still happen even in this long form setting where you'll start to get. These narratives, because oh, well, the problem I see with especially tech companies is they still want control over the narrative. They still want to be able to like uh, edit and, and and monitor things that people are searching. That people like that's the the problem I've been seeing with most tech companies. Yeah, and I think I think the the money is probably going to continue to polarize media. I mean, it, there's more money in catering to one group than it is to talk to both groups, right? Because you end up pissing one off. Uh, anytime you take a, a position that happens to be a, against them. So it'll probably continue to polarize. I just hope that there's still a market for open debate and dialogue. And this is the best, this is the best medium that I've ever, that I know of that exists that could do that. But will it fall prey to what you're saying? It might. I, I mean, think it will. Oh, I yeah. think, I think my prediction is this. Okay. The future of us. We just remember who pulled up that, uh, or where was that, uh, thing that you pulled up, Sal, where you showed us the, the breakdown oh, of- Oh, uh, uh, whether or not media channels were- Yeah, left, center, right. Where, where, where yeah, did you get that from? Yeah, that was called all, uh, I can't remember the name. I'll come up with it. But so, anyway. my, so my- Allsides.com. Allsides.com. Okay, yeah. so my theory is that it, it, you're, we are going to see the exact same thing, except what we'll see up there instead. Yeah, YouTube, Joe Rogan. It's no, no, no. YouTube, oh. Twitter, Spotify. I agree. The platforms will be, be at one point become known as more conservative or more liberal or more center. I think that we are in the middle of that time. Media is the same. It's just changing the way we yeah, do it. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? You're probably yeah. right. And I can so, see that. And so, and if it affects their pocketbook, I can't imagine they're going to allow certain conversations to still happen. So it's coming. I agree with that because well, if you look at the chart that they have, they have all the media up there, CNN and you know MSNBC and Fox and Breitbart and all that stuff. What you don't see up there is is, is Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, yeah. YouTube. But you, I, I agree with you. You better you need believe, to put that up there. yeah, because they they are editing their content yeah. to some extent. They do, and you do that long enough, you you will be put well, up. Well, and that it's list. an interesting thing because if like Joe Rogan was to break that contract, like think about another company that would allow him to then say those things and what kind of business that would bring them. So it's like, who knows? It might actually, you know, benefit him in the long run. Anyways, Spotify paid him a lot of money because they knew it would benefit their brand. Breaking a contract with Rogan would be a bad, in my opinion, really bad. idea. That would be very bad for you, Spotify, you know, to do something like that. So I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there's articles right now that are being uh, one of our other uh, partners, I'm seeing lots of articles talking about uh, personalized pillows. Pluto Pillow, of course, always being the one that they talk the most about. Well, the leader in it, but first this, ones to do it. This is a, this so is nice. A, we have that technology here. Yeah, you know what's interesting? I never real thought about this. Why hasn't personalized pillow? Because what's a personalized pillow? It, it, they they do it off of your your height. Your shoulder size, preferences on soft or cool or warm or whatever. You always know that one pillow, anyways. Like I would like if I'm going to a house or my friends, I would always take that one pillow that was like the perfect mold and fit anyway. Yeah, so it's interesting to me that this market is relatively new. It sounds like a no-brainer, but I, I bet it's because the tech didn't exist. Where, it, it's the tech yeah, side of it, right? Yeah. The, the market's always been there. there. That was, I mean, I remember that was a selling point for me to partner up with them when I was originally first talking to the CEO and. She's like, go online right now and like, go try and find the best pillow you can find. Like, look what you see. And she was right. Like, you just see like 
thousands of articles and different and different brands and it's just like where do you start yeah. and how do i it's know like blogs really yeah how do i know this pillow is going to be ideal for me and she goes nobody had really made a, a customized experience for the consumer to be able to find what would be the most ideal pillow for them and mm -hmm. i think that's where they crushed it you know yeah first question is from jesse mcdonough is the muscle building signal you send when you perform resistance training specific to only the muscles you train or can it have an overall effect on the body? I recently sustained a knee injury and can't do lower body training, but I am trying to preserve muscle. It's largely specific, but there is a proven systemic muscle building effect. In fact, they do, they, there's some interesting studies where they have people train mm -hmm. one arm um, and not the other arm. And most of the muscle and strength gains go to that arm that's being trained. But they do There's see still growth. Yeah, they still see some muscle and strength gain a little bit uh, in the opposite arm that wasn't trained at all. So there is this systemic effect. Now this is also uh, supported by you know lots of people's experience with certain exercises. Some exercises seem to send a louder full body signal. For example, a barbell squat or a deadlift. You know, I know with clients, I've had clients add deadlifts to the routine. And get stronger at you know tricep extensions and curls uh, as a result of, of getting stronger at this big, loud signal exercise like a deadlift. Same thing with squats. It was said back in the day that if you, you want bigger arms, you should squat more. Um, and I think there's a little bit of truth to that because these exercises use so much muscle mm -hmm. and so much skill and require so much from the central nervous system that yeah you do get you know a lot of the gains go specifically to the body parts being worked but there is a, a systemic effect that happens do you think the body. that's just you're because you're still investing in the CNS you know what i'm saying like you're still putting you're still putting an effort to develop that it's right? got to be part of it right? it has to be part of it i mean if that if that's yeah. the if that's the hub of communication to all of your muscles right sure. from the brain that says fire move and do all this and if you just stop working out completely, not only do muscles atrophy, but I also would think that that neurological communication starts to slow down or weaken. Right. And so even though you may not have a good connection to the injury muscle that we're talking about right now, you still are strengthening the hub of communication. Yeah. Like Plus there's, it, yeah, there's an irradiation effect to that, meaning like where I'm trying to stabilize my body while the other allowing the freedom for one part of my body to do the movement, but stay anchored, stay grounded, stay stable. Uh, so that that's, the isometric tension is also something that builds muscle. And I, I can't help but think too, that's going to play a factor in uh, that overall signal affecting other parts of your body. Yeah, they do studies too too, where people will think about a movement and not actually perform the movement, and they have improvements in the movement. Yeah, you know, they've done. Trip. There's old studies with like people thinking about shooting free throws, for example. They, they don't shoot any actual free throws, but they they go through in their mind and shoot them, and they see an improvement in their skill and ability. So it's it it probably is a central nervous system thing happening. The muscle fibers themselves aren't being directly stressed, but the central nervous system is constantly being trained uh, through exercise. And so you see a, a louder signal throughout the, the whole body. And so the exercises that work the whole body in you know, these big gross motor movements are probably the best at it. Another thing is these you know, like trigger sessions, which we find in, in our MAPS anabolic program, which are kind of these light, uh, low level, uh, low intensity type workout sessions you do on the days in between your hard workouts. I notice when I do trigger sessions, I'll target certain body parts and I'll I'll see the gains in those body but I see gains all over also from them. and I think it, it's the trigger sessions are just sending this loud full body signal as I'm doing them frequently to to, to build keeping muscle. it alive and active. Well, yeah. if you're making the case for like the loud signal, I would I would push this person in the direction of like this is a great time to put a lot of energy and focus on your overhead press or your Z press, right? Because this it's been called the uh, you know the squat for the upper body. Mm -hmm. So if you want a loud signal to send uh, as far as related to the CNS and you can't train lower body whatsoever, um, this might be a great time to be practicing your overhead press and getting really, really good at it in hopes to you know have less atrophy happen. Totally. And then here's the other thing, of course, uh, once you heal from your energy, uh, injury, excuse me, the muscle comes back a lot faster mm -hmm. afterwards. So it's not... And I know it can be something you worry about, especially if you're super concerned with, you know, your physique. Um, you know, I've hurt myself and, and you watch my body part or whatever deteriorate. It comes back so fast. It's actually quite 
it's pretty easy to get the muscle back once you had it the first time. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question is from Truly Interesting. I'm training training for the Firefighter Academy. I'm 6'1 and 195 pounds, and I've been following MAPS Anabolic. Which program should I choose next, and should I be at maintenance or at a bulk? I need to train for a lot of running with 75 pounds of equipment. Oh, easily two programs I would recommend yeah. to this person. Uh, performance. MAPS, MAPS Performance. MAPS Strong. Uh, or MAPS Strong could be good. So could OCR. MAPS OCR. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those three programs are going to give you the kind of fitness, strength, uh, mobility, and agility that you need to be a good uh, firefighter. MAPS Performance, just generally across the board, is probably your best bet. We, we created that program – Literally to improve, yeah, build muscle, burn body fat, of course, but really to improve someone's ability to move, yeah, to 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 climb, to jump, to squat, to lift, to twist, just stronger and better all of them. And it's really the, one of the I think it's the only program with an explosive phase where you actually work on explosive power, which will right. also benefit you. Definitely benefit you. And I bring up strong mainly as uh, you know, follow up to, to MAPS performance. I think MAPS performance is great at uh, you know, reinforcing stability amongst all your joints and really getting you familiar with all these different uh, planes of motion and very ef efficient and strong and and then explosive. But why I think MAPS strong would be a great follow up to that is because of the fact that you're talking about 75 pounds you need to carry and you need to do this with endurance. And the work sessions really address that. We even have sandbag shouldering. And, and certain moves like that that would really emulate uh, a lot of what uh, you'd be experiencing, you know, going into the fire academy. So uh, that's definitely one of those. It's unconventional. Uh, there's lots of functional uh, lifts in there that uh, challenge you, which will, you will definitely translate well uh, to to what you're pursuing. Yeah, I would probably take this per person through performance first and then into strong. I think that uh, you can't go wrong with either one of them. I think that performance does a good job, though. We address durability in there, so there's that. Uh, there's a phase in there specifically for that. So. So that sets the table really well, I think, to transition into strong. And then to address diet, right? So you asked a question about uh, should I be at a maintenance or a, a bulk? I think either one of those programs that you go to from anabolic are probably going to put more uh, of a calorie demand. So I would probably put you whatever your what you think is maintenance right now. I would probably if I was coaching you when we transitioned into the one of these next two programs, I would also bump your calories calories slightly. Yeah, too. but from a performance standpoint, I would not go into an aggressive bulk. Here's the thing: no, with, no not aggressive, but I I would. This is a great time to add calories because they're going to be moving. Yes, yeah, program so, the program is more days a week. There's more demand on cardiovascular. There's more volume in both those programs. So literally, I'm adding calories, not because I'm trying to bulk or gain weight, but because you have more yeah, demand. No, I agree with you. That's, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. I agree exactly with what you're saying. And what I'm going to caution you against is, because when people say bulk, oftentimes they mean gain lots of like weight. donuts okay. and everything. Yeah. Don't do that. And here's why. Um, even if you get stronger in the gym, that doesn't always translate into better performance uh, outside the gym because what you're dealing with is a strength to weight ratio, Okay. That's what's most important in the real world when you're moving your body around and doing things that require, you know, that, that may be required of a firefighter. So if you gain 15 pounds of weight and get five pounds stronger on everything, yeah, you're stronger in the gym, but you're actually weaker in ratio to your body weight. Meaning if you need to climb or move something or move your body, you now have lost performance. You want a really good, like a gymnast. If you look at a gymnast, for example, they have tremendous strength to weight ratios. For the weight that they carry, they have incredible strength. And so that's why they can move the bo their bodies the way they do. So as a firefighter, you want to have some muscle for sure, especially if you're picking up other bodies. But I caution you against the aggressive bulk. You know, a, a big, heavy, bulky firefighter is going to, you got to move your own body uh, most of the time. You're going to exhaust yourself a little more and make yourself less effective. So the, the what we would do, like if I was coaching you nutritionally, is the goal for me would be can I increase calories and not see much fluctuation on the scale? Yeah, I would do that. Like exactly. that would be a perfect world. Perfect world is, okay, I know I'm about to send you into a program that is going to require – 
more demand on calories than the, the previous program we were just running, MAPS Anabolic. So I want to bump your calories 100, 200 something calories a day, mm. right? Something small, not nothing major. And then the goal is, you know, you're maintaining your weight. Now, if you're losing, then I get to add more calories because I kind of want to keep you hovering around that 195, but then slowly be able to increase calories. That's a perfect world. Perfect world is we're increasing calories really slow and you're also maintaining your weight about it. And then when you know you've over increased your calories is if you start putting on one pound, two pound every single week, you need to back off and go the other direction. Next question is from Lucy ZL3. I spend most of my day sitting on a chair due to online classes. Is there any benefit to sitting cross-legged for hip mobility or should I just do exercises to prevent low back pain? You know, one of the best things you can do if you're sitting all day, it's and this is like magic, okay, is to every hour get up and do five minutes of easy, you know, mobility work. That's it. Every single hour for five minutes, get up and do something for mobility for your upper back or your hips or mm -hmm. your ankle. And just do that every hour. It, with the clients that I've worked with who were, you know, worked in tech, who did sit for long hours, you know, long bouts of time, this was the most effective thing to do. Changing how you sit can definitely help. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing about sitting. When you're sitting, you're not active. So if I sit cross-legged, now I'm in a static stretch with this cross-legged position. It might improve my, my range of motion, but it's not going to necessarily improve my mobility. But standing up and doing an active mobility thing like a leg swing or – getting on the floor real quick at 90-90 or combat stretch or handcuffs with rotation or, or do a wall press, that's going to improve your mobility. And literally just five minutes every hour. If you're working for eight hours, that's 40 minutes of mobility work. That, that does a pretty good job. Hmm. I, I like to sit and uh, – uh, <laughs> basically do a few things. I do cross my leg uh, every now and then when I'm getting tight and I could feel that like in my piriformis, it, it starts to, uh, you know, really act up if it's over a certain amount of time when I'm driving and I'm doing certain repetitive patterns, I try to really pay attention to my foot position. And so uh, there's, there's little things that little angles make, they go a long way uh, because of the fact that I'm always fighting that, 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 that winding up that tends to happen when I let the pattern go too long. And so to interrupt that pattern, I just try to be more conscious of it, like in how I'm, like how I'm sitting and how my posture is with my sitting and then what I can somewhat do to counter some of these things. So, uh, you know, some of it is an internal rotation for me. I have to constantly be conscious of because of the fact that I'm always, my tendency is always to be uh, externally rotating out and my, that's my comfortable position. And, and this is just what happens over time where I just keep my, my heel tends to come in, my toes come out and I'm constantly putting pressure on the pedal back and forth and back and forth. And then I come and I sit in the studio and I'm sitting and now I, I notice my leg is in that certain position. So, um, you know, in terms of it being like a ritual and something that you're cognizant of, I think there's value in that. But what Sal said, like interrupting and doing actual uh, mobility exercises that will unwind you, very valuable. But also like too, you just just try to uh, know that certain things will will create this this type of of tightness and pain, and to be able to recognize that and how you're sitting and how your posture is, is also very beneficial. Now by cross-legged, what do you think she means by that? Do you think she means like literally crossing her legs like the way mine are or Sal is right now? Or do you mean, do you think it means like sitting Indian style? It could be well, either right or, or hip like I this. I go sort of wide, you know, with my knee here and I'm pushing down pressure on my knee to, yeah. to relieve some tension. But yeah, I don't know. what Because a lot of times, I mean, I'll tell you being just totally honest about, I mean, the reason why I cross, it's like, that's not an ideal thing. It's because it's, it would, it's more uncomfortable to have my hips opened up. So I'm actually crutching that issue, right? That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing that I cross my legs. It's not help. It may be giving me- It's not because you're modest. <laughs> no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's giving me temporary relief in my hips and my low back. So that's why I'm curious about w why she's alluding to, would crossing my legs be a good idea? Crossing your legs may be giving you temporary relief because you're all, you're internally rotating even more, and yeah. to externally rotate feels tight on your hips and pulls on your low back, which means you need to be doing more of that 
not the other way around. Yeah, you're resting in that too. You're not that's, like... Yeah. yeah, so that's my point. Like, so, uh, you know, if someone sits like uh, normally Indian style, which is normally the opposite of how most of us are... Most of us have an issue, unlike Justin, most of us have an issue of being like more internally rotated. Mm. And so crossing your legs is, is, is a way of like crutching that. It feels comfortable on my hips and my low back to constantly be going back and forth between crossing my two legs. That is not a good habit. I'll be the first to admit that. So if you're asking that as a, a, a thing that you should do, um, that's not helping uh, your low back. It's helping it temporarily because you're sitting down and the hips feel tight, but you're actually crutching the the issue. Yeah, the, sure. the issue is you probably lack good external rotation in the hips, and so that's why that feels comfortable because it gives you temporary relief. Mm. What you need to do is get down every hour and get in some 90-90 positions and, and work. And work on, on your core strength as well. Right. Next question is from Tazy Kloppers. What realizations did you have in your 20s that changed your life? Oh, uh, well, I can think of one. This was might have been 19 or 20, uh, but one of my mentors um, taught me a, a valuable skill when it comes to communication. He said, use your ears and your mouth in proportion. He says, if you want to be a good communicator, you need to learn how to listen uh, twice as much as you talk. And that really made a huge difference and how I communicated to clients. Because up until that point, you know, I started off training people at the age of 18. So for the first year or two, I was really good at telling and talking and telling and motivating. Um, but I don't think I was very good at listening and asking questions. And you learn a lot when you ask questions and it helps form, it helps you form how you're going to communicate certain things. Plus the person who's talking to you now feels more engaged in the conversation. So I remember that specifically, and I, I think I was 20 when I first heard mm. that. <sighs> yeah. Got, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, no, I was just thinking about this because I'm pretty sure like, well, it wasn't 20, it was like 18, 20-ish where uh, I know there's like rituals of becoming a man or becoming a woman and, um, you, you know, and then we celebrate this. We used to, this used to be like a big deal, uh, you know, back in the day, and I, I, uh, I found myself actually going through this, this process of like, who, who am I specifically? Like, I know who I am based off of like, my parents are these people, my brother, you know, I'm affiliated with, you know, this, this circle of friends that I grew up with, but you know, I, I, I really didn't have my own specific identity. And, uh, this is where this time in my life, I decided to just go do something that was completely uh, uh, my own decision and be away from my comfort zone and everybody here and basically just moved and traveled across country and completely restarted from scratch and uh, went through that whole journey. And I thought that uh, I did, at the time, I didn't even know that that was like a significant thing for me to do that. It was just like, well, I got to, I got to figure this out. I got to do something, uh, you know, and I got to go to college. I got to learn. I got to, you know, figure out what I'm going to do for my career. Uh, there was an opportunity that was there. So I just decided like, I want to do this. And, you know, I, I, I found so much value in that because I was so reliant on my comforts and all these things, you know, back home that, uh, I didn't realize I, I, I was really sheltering myself, uh, and limiting my potential. And so I, I'm very much like of an advocate now for this and want to see this, uh, with my, my own kids and, and have them evaluate this and, and go, go find themselves and, and really own their belief system and who they are and, uh, you know, sort of recreate themselves. I think that's, you know, very, very cool thing to do. So I had a, I had a ton of epiphanies in my 20s that changed my life forever. So I'm going to share two of them because I think they're they're two of the most important. Um, I just we just had an interview recently and we were sharing stories and uh, one of them happened in a company in my in my mid 20s that changed my life forever. And that was uh, I went through this moment where or moment in time where uh, I was really frustrated with where I was at in my career. Um, I expected myself to be somewhere else financially. I thought I'd be at a much higher level. At that time, I thought I would be the district or the vice president level for this company. I was doing all the things I thought I needed to do to be successful, and I wasn't getting promoted fast enough. And uh, I was really angry. I was angry at the, the company, and I blamed others for where I was at. And I had this epiphany of, why am I allowing this company to dictate my personal growth? And why does it matter my title and, and what position I hold in it on how, how successful or how much I can grow 
as an individual. And so I began reading. That's when I really started to read. Like before that, I like I hated reading. I didn't pick up a book that often. And and at the, the time, the CEO was putting out a book every single month that he was, uh, you know, saying that he was reading. And so I said, you know what? If I if I believe that I should be a VP, why don't why don't I read as much as what this CEO is reading and learn as much as he is? And that set me off on a path of of personal growth that I think accelerated uh, my financial success uh, in the the rest of my life. So that was one big moment for me. Uh, the other one was uh, that was huge for me in my twenties was evaluating the circle of my friends. And I don't remember where the first time I heard the 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 old saying of that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. But that was very impactful for me to really start to evaluate that. And I think initially when I heard that, it kind of went in one ear, went out there, oh that's cool. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you hang out with a lot of successful people, you'll probably be successful. But not to the point where I really started to evaluate it and think like, okay, I've got the because I had friends, I had really close best friends and people I spent a lot of time with and I loved and and had and 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 really enjoyed. But the more I started to think about that, I said, man, uh, you know, am I the 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 one leading this circle of five people or am I kind of in the middle of that? And like, am I really stretching myself and and am I really putting myself around other people that are trying to elevate me? And and it was tough because in the, in your mid twenties, and a lot of people are still very attached to their friends in college or high school that they've built. And a lot of times at that age, you don't realize that the things that you have in common with them are are things that maybe are not your favorite qualities. For example, like you know, some of my best friends in high school are like my drinking buddies. You know, the, the guys that would do crazy, stuff. and we had loyalty to each other. So there's this bond because we were loyal to each other but they weren't really helping me grow as a person or they weren't pushing me to be a better version of myself. They're who I got together with and partied and had fun and had a good time and I enjoyed that. And so I, I would gravitate to that a lot. And when I started to really evaluate uh, where they were financially, where they were with personal growth and were they stretching themselves to get better and collectively uh, were we all doing that? And the answer was no. And that was when I began to really start to seek out people that were in positions or places in their life that I wanted to go to, even though I wasn't currently there and started to spend more of my time with them. When that circle started to change, uh, so much started to happen in my life. And then I also learned that, that that continues to evolve. And I really believe that's what what has led to the, the circle in this room. Uh, the reason why I think we all work so well together is I think we, we share this in common and we we may have never found each other had we not all been on that similar path of trying to elevate the people that were always around. And you know, when you get a group, when you actually get a group of four or five other men or women that are like minded like that, that are pushing uh, themselves and each other to grow and to be better versions of themselves every day, it's amazing how much that fast tracks you in your life to success. Right on. Mm -hmm. All right, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video and audio. So if you like listening to the podcast, come check us out on YouTube. Then you can look at us too. It's pretty fun, I promise. Yeah. Uh, we're also on Instagram. You can find Doug at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Here's a great example of taking, you know, maybe some applications of alkaline water and saying there may be some benefit, and then just you know doing it across the board, yeah, bastardizing it, it. Which is yeah. So okay, so alkaline five dollar bottle of water now, right? So yeah. water has I think normal water's pH levels like.